today marks a year of lockdown, as many people will know, and it also marks 25 days that our Johannesburg colleagues have been occupying the National Arts Council offices um, in Newtown, essentially demanding answers from the National Arts Council and from the Department of Arts and Culture as to what has happened with the presidential economic stimulus package of 300 million that was intended for creative industries practitioners. I think unfortunately it's it's the straw that broke the camel's back. The, the department and the National Arts Council for, are seen by many in the industry yeah, to be very out of touch which is with what's going on on the ground. Um, so uh, unfortunately th this has just been something that has just triggered, sometimes it is that way, it's just triggered um, a movement of people who are after a year of lockdown are absolutely desperate and those funds are meant for those, for those artists and those creative industry practitioners. And unfortunately the answers that have been coming forth from the different press conferences and the different me uh, meetings that are being Help. Right. It's just not enough. Can it's not sufficient. There is not real action and being taken and there's not meaningful you. engagement Thank being taken you. to get out of a situation that is that is in a very precarious place at, at the moment. It's 25 days of occupation and that's 25 days where the department and the National Arts Council have not actually been able to propose um, answers that, that, that are acceptable to the arts industry. And as you can see behind us and there are artists across the country that are engaging in actions. There's a hunger strike in the Northern Cape, there's the Johannesburg sit-in, there's artists from Beaufort West to Puff Adder that are lending their support to this cause. So this is not a random small group of artists, this is an entire industry that's in crisis. Um, obviously the COVID has had a huge effect on all society throughout South Africa, throughout the world. For me, it, specifically being at, at my age, it was hugely pro problematic so that the few gigs that I possibly could do no longer, all of them were cancelled. And I specifically have so much empathy for my younger colleagues who have to pay a bond, who have children who have to be fed and who need to go to school uh, and things like that. I have been privileged that although I had to go through the apartheid, which was exceptionally difficult, that I did not go through COVID and what the result of that has been. So that was really important. It has been exceptionally difficult for those persons. I think more for the people in the arts than it is even in many of the other professions. Never mind the funding, just the fact that all the restrictions in place has given no consideration to all those affected by the events industry and those who support that industry. So never mind funding to make it happen. It cannot make it cannot happen because the restrictions does not allow it to happen. So most of us had to pivot and, and find new ways of creating income. I've pivoted into well I've got a broad skill set, so I've had to pivot into another business business sector, leaning on my skill set. All the way from Kylie Chuck, let's give them a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen.